So was it Death Note just like the best movie ever? You know, I didn't like thrash or yell or scream or literally bang my head up against the wall, you know, just cursing its existence. I think it's the most angry I've seen you at a movie probably ever. Yeah, I mean, like this movie, it's not interesting bad like Twilight or it's not like funny bad like showgirls or you know trolls or any of those like funny bad movies it is just painfully awful <laughs> it is so 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 bad and I think what makes it as bad as it is is it's very clear that the people who made it just do not understand Death Note at all like they don't understand the characters they don't understand the message they don't understand why it appeals to people they don't understand like like I was saying, how the nihilistic feel of the movie is act or of the series is actually really important, and and that isn't in this at so all. at all. So like you know the philosophies that are in the original series in the manga and the anime just aren't there. So yeah, you talk about some of the stuff you <laughs> found most awful. Like what was some of the most awful? Well, I would say, like you said, the spirit of the piece was totally washed away. It's like it didn't even exist. And like we talked about, it seems like maybe one or two people have seen the television show. But it's like they read a review on IMDb. Or and like then, a synopsis. Yeah. And was like, okay, this is what this is about. Because if you're a fan of Death Note... Uh, what you're really a fan of is the cat and mouse game. Like, that's kind of the whole reason for the series' existence, is to see, like, this super smart, highly competent, like, freakishly intelligent person against this other, like, highly smart, freakishly intuitive person. And also... Yeah, like that's that's why you why you watch it, the cat and mouse game, the chess game between these two and then later when Al dies. Sorry, spoilers, you know, this series is like eleven like eleven, fifteen years old death notice, so if you don't know how to Al dies. Eleven surprise. And 15, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Mello and Nier take over, but still, like, if, if Light had, or if Al hadn't done his initial investigation of Light, Nier and Mello would not then have been able to catch him, which, you know, Nier says at the end of the show that right. he needed, that they needed Al that to from, have done his beginning. thing yeah. before they were able to do theirs. So, so it right, like, like post-humorously, post-humorously, Al catches light, and then, like, we see, like, we see, like, his ghost, like, watching him die but at the end, uh, one of the very last shots of the show. But, yeah, like, that, and where the cat and mouse game between the two characters is so intellectual. Yes. Like they're always like analyzing ahead, each other's yes and and their their words and their motives is are they acting right now? Are they pretending right now? Are they saying this because they think that I will do this or maybe they're saying this because they think I'll do this. So it's it's constant. It's a very talky show. Yes. And series. It's and basically all psychological, like yeah. a continuous stream of trying to figure out the psychologies of one another. Right. Right. And right, like in this one, both Light and Elle are super emotional characters, which is just weird. Like they they should not be. I mean, yeah, they they get into they get into fist fights with one another, you know, Light and Elle, but that's only when, you know, they're pushed push to the brink and, and Light just feels like he, he needs to punch out because he's so he's sick of his in crap. The corner and he just wants yeah, and to that smack was, him on the face. Yeah, that was, you know, when Light didn't think he was Kira, he thought he was innocent and he was getting sick of, you know, L's to Light thought, you know, his perfectly unfounded allegations because there's no way I'm Kira. So yeah, you know, he, he had to hit him. So, you know, there are, there you know, there are moments of emotionalness of 
of light now like they're not robot people but still like mostly they're it's it's like a hyper masculine intelligence that yeah. both of these characters yeah they're possess. they're both highly driven by their intelligence that's what pushes them forward and then like kind of rolling in the background is that emotion but that's always in the background it's never in our faces no and uh like and that's part of the point of of misa's character in yeah. in the series is that she is like she's, she's a hyper emotional character and she's a foil to both light now and that is part of the point of her existence it's not just you know to to annoy you she she has like thematic reasons to be there which is why i didn't mind her i thought that she created a good yeah contrast yeah and i mean i i don't know if people still dislike misa now you know i haven't i wasn't really big into the fandom of this ever but like i i touched on it a little and uh, I, I kind of would defend Misa to people and why, like, I think, you know, she should be in the story and, like, the reason why she she's there. She serves a purpose. Yeah, she serves a purpose. And in the, in the dub, I, or in the, the Japanese track, I actually like her. I do not like her dub actress that much. But anyway. Um, <laughs> That's besides the point. Besides the point. <laughs> Anyway, so a weird thing, like, that I think the movie did is they kind of switched Light and, and Nisa, like, where Light, Light's motivation in this movie is that his mother was killed by a bad guy. And in, you know, Misa Amane, guy. Misa Amane is like, that's the reason why she loves Kira is because Kira killed the criminal who killed her parents. Mm -hmm. So, like, where, where you know, there was that switch and where Mia in this, you know, she had, like, I, I call her a murder slut. Like, <laughs> she is. Yeah, she is. Like, she just... Need to kill Yeah, she just, she just needs to kill <laughs> for some reason. But it's, like, we can kind of assume that her reasons are, are light uh, Yagami's, where it's, like, yeah. she, she, and even before, like, Light gets the death note in the anime, like, we can see, like, he does legitimately think he's better than other people, mm -hmm. and that he deserves to, which I guess to they, pass judgment, which I'm guessing is, like, what Mia's motivations yeah. are, but they never make that That's clear. That's not clear. It's not obvious. Honestly, her entire point of her arc is, like, a big question mark. Like, because we really analyzed it, we can sort of see what her maybe, motivation was, maybe. possibly. Yeah, like, the, we could just be pulling this out of the air because uh, I don't think nobody bothered to write a character or motivations for her besides being, like, an edgy girl. Yeah. Which you can Who's tell because she's a smoker. Yeah, yeah, she smokes. And she's on <laughs> during a cheerleading, cheerleading squad. practice. Yeah, she smokes during cheerleading practice. So she she's a cheerleader. Who she's smokes. bad. She's a bad girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's also totally 1980s. There are a lot of like 80s movie tropes. Yeah, that and we bullies were up like on. the 80 movie. The bullies are like 80 movie yeah. bullies. Yeah. 90 movie bullies. Yeah. Like, real people do not act like no. that and that's another thing where like death note is so like the characters in death note are so sharply conceived and drawn and uh, executed where it's like this is like a believable person i believe i believe light's dad i believe matsuda as a character i believe misa as a character like i understand these people mm -hmm. like not just as characters but as people i know what they're coming from i i know what they're thinking you know why they're acting this way and the movie there's like none of that and uh in my experience maybe this isn't the same anymore but when i used to be into anime like a lot of people who i knew were into anime you know like really didn't like hollywood or or you know mainstream movies like they kind of T took pride in like being an anime fan versus somebody who would like watch you know western uh movies especially and uh like the reason why people hate that you know in my experience hated those things is because they were dumb mm. and it's like th this is like what i imagine you know like their worst fear come true this american death note movie where you take something that is so smart 
and make it so stupid. Yeah, an amazing text. Something that if you wanted to do a remake of, there are a hundred different different di ways it could have been done well. But this was not one of them. Yeah, and I mean, maybe Death Note can't even be a movie. Like, it needs to be a series or, or a trilogy. Maybe, although they did they did hint at a, at a sequel for... <laughs> awful movie which by the way why yeah seriously why yeah we we need we need more awful butchering of of death note we basically summed up this movie as like a twilight yeah twilight twilight death note of death note and you know to talk a bit more about mia and light's relationship where it's like why the fuck does he show her the death note right away like he like he has this this great and powerful secret and he's just showing this some you know some girl he barely knows that he can kill anyone he wants as long as he knows their face and name like and we talked about how they could have remedied this by making some sort of past connection obvious to the audience but for us watching it, like yeah. with flashbacks or whatever. Yeah, like but with maybe the two of them were friends in the past. And especially if he was his, his friend when his mom died, then like everything would make sense about their relationship. Or at least it would make way more sense. Right. Right. Yes. And that's... Uh, because like the, part of the appeal of this series as well is like... And why, why Light is a character that fascinates us so much is you kind of think like if, if you're just this regular person living your regular life and you get handed this, in, you know, incredible power, who would you be if you got this power? And uh, that's one of the things that makes Death Note realistic and something that they also completely missed with this movie i mean they tried i guess by making light like oh well maybe we shouldn't use the death note no more maybe we shouldn't kill people i'm not so into killing people no more you know because i i'm a pussy i guess <laughs> well i don't even know if it was i think again <laughs> this is me guessing here because the text didn't give us much to work with even though the movie felt like it was five hours long. <laughs> so how a movie that had a running time of like an hour, 30 minutes, managed to feel like it dragged on for a millennia? Yeah, I, like I, I, I checked the that. time on my computer and I'm like, holy shit, this has only been going for an hour and 10 minutes. Like, how how is this not over? And oh yeah, isn't that what Death Note was totally missing? You know, a chase scene. Yeah, that that's Death Note needed a chase scene. <laughs> and a stupid action movie climax, you know? That's what it was missing. And a Ferris wheel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and gory deaths. You yes. know, final destination deaths. Yes, yeah. So it was a mix between Twilight, 80s tropes, and a final destination. Why? Yeah, Why? yeah. And like, as I said to you before, Death Note is not a series that should have a romance. Because in, in the original series... You know, the romance is between uh, an obsessed fangirl and the guy who uses her. Mm -hmm. So it, it really it really is not, you know, a romantic relationship. But it reminds me of something that TJ Kirk says about romances is that they're just put in to put female asses into seats. And that's exactly the case here, you know. Slash fans also talk about how ro a lot of time romances in fiction between men and women are so poorly conceived. Like all the couple needs to do is they need to be in the room together and the audience will go, yeah, they'll they'll get together. They'll, you know, and have sex. And then if they and... don't get together for some reason, the audience is disappointed, which is or totally... confused. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, so just just a horrible should not have happened thing. And you know, light in the 
uh, some people think he's asexual where what he gets out of women is like what they can do for him and mm -hmm. how he can manipulate him. It's all about the power Like play. we can infer that he enjoys women sexually, but that that's more, you know, something you have to infer, not something that's really in the text. So again, it totally misses the point of Alan. You said though, maybe he needed to be more relatable to in order yeah. to... Yeah, because but... obviously like for some and I still honestly do not understand why this was made in the first place like I guess like money but for anyone who's actually seen the show I don't understand how anyone could watch this be like this was a great interpretation I'm so glad they made this like the whole point of remaking something is obviously monetarily driven I mean number one let's be you know obvious and honest about that right but there's also there also has to be some sort of connection or something that would get us the fans of the first thing to see and enjoy the second thing so that the big producers can put on more of these things that again will bring us back again and yeah. again and again and this didn't at all. It didn't fulfill any expectations or needs or wants that we would have had. And I feel like any fan would have. Like, I can't imagine running into a Death Note fan who was, who would be like, boy, that was so great. I'm really glad I wasted, I mean, spent an hour and a half of my life watching this. And like, I mean, the one kind of good thing is is Willem Dafoe's performance. Well, yeah. You. I mean, he's... I mean, that's, that's pretty always much gonna be the a good only thing, like... good thing. But still, again, totally misunderstands Ryuk's character. Ryuk is supposed to be basically a spectator who just, you know, gives out uh, a glib observation from time to time, you know, says something sarcastic. Yeah, and like... And he's not on anyone's side, and right. he makes that very clear all the time. Right. And, uh... He's always like, I don't care what happens. Yeah, and he's there. He's only there because he's bored, you know? Yeah. He doesn't want to... He, he doesn't worship chaos. He doesn't, you know, want to make the world more chaotic. He's like, oh, you humans. Yeah, you know, humans are so interesting. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and uh And that's like, that disempowers light mm -hmm. by making Ry Ryuk, you know, do more stuff. Because, like, a... Uh, Light uses the Death Note before he even knows, like, Shinigamis exist or, like, why this mm -hmm. note is powerful. Like, he he kills that one guy who was, like, holding up that daycare center. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, base, to test it out to see yeah. if it would work. And, and it does, and it shocks him, and then he sees Ryuk. But only after he commits that first murder. Where... I mean, basically the entire movie is light getting his power taken away in some form or another and maybe and again i'm just spitballing this one maybe that was a point of the filmmaker to have him be so wrapped up in mia like this was another way for him to lose his power so instead of the thread of the actual television show and the actual point where it's someone, albeit murderously, claiming his power through to the very end, to the very last moment, he is claiming that power and holding on to it with all that he can. Yeah. In the movie, he's constantly having to give it up. Yeah, which, why? I don't, I don't understand why that was done. I guess, again, to make him more relatable, but again I keep saying missing the point like the reason why another reason why Light is a character that audiences like is because he touches something deep and cathartic and, and dark within us where as much as we can say no nobody deserves to die I'm against capital punishment like even those people like will hear a story or or learn about somebody who did a truly heinous you know, unbelievably awful thing, and that a, a a part of that person will say that fucker needs to die, 
and that's why and that's why light is such a great character and but that's not part of light turner at all so totally misses the point of why light exists why he's a character audiences relate to mm -hmm. why he's interesting you know on a philosophical and psychological level so yeah yeah again obviously totally <laughs> missing and misconstruing the entire point of the series yeah so do we have anything else to say um i don't know um oh i guess l we didn't really talk that much about l at first he seemed like like oh this is l but then he's crying and stuff and so oh you know hyper emotional and again it's like why are why are light and l so so emotional in in this you know it just it really confuses me and i don't know if this is like an updated version and trying to like bring the more like sensitive man vibe that is like predominant in our culture right now because you know men are culturally speaking more sensitive more open yada 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 so i don't know if that's what they were doing like trying to put like the modern male into this piece but it just doesn't work at all yeah, and like with the point of the show yeah like we're supposed to believe that l is one of the most intelligent people in the world and right. in the and in the anime and manga, you can believe that because he legitimately is. Like, whoever the fuck this guy is, it's like... It would be he like... Couldn't, he couldn't solve... He couldn't solve a regular murder. Right. Let right. alone, like, Kira's... Kira I mean, murders. what they did would be, like, giving a poetry book to Bruce Willis's character in Die Hard. Like, something that you would never expect and something that doesn't fit with the text at all. And that was, like, the entire movie. It was, like, Bruce Willis doing Shakespeare in the middle of Die Hard. Like, what are you doing? Why is this happening? This has nothing to do with why we're here or the point of the actual text itself. Okay. Well, I think we're done. <laughs> Sayonara, Afida Zayn.